Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah ta'ana. He said, As for the statement of the heart, then it is a tasdeeq al jazm billah. It is that a person has a tasdeeq al jazm billah. That a person has certain affirmation and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels and his books and his messengers and the last day. All of these are affairs of aqeedah. He said, and likewise, including that, is to have faith in everything that the Prophet wasallam came with. To have faith in everything that the Prophet wasallam came with. With Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they believe in the al of Al-Kitab wa Sunnah and the Ma'ani. They believe in the wordings and the meanings of everything that has come in the text. Ahlul Bid'ah wa Dalala. They have found ways to do what? To change the meanings of the text. When a person does that, when they change the meaning of the text, then they have believed in the wordings, but they have not yet accepted the meanings. They have not yet accepted the meanings. And this affair of qawlul qalb, of the statement of the heart, is that, what is in your heart and what drives you is قَالَ Allah, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Allah said and the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم said Ibn Taymiyyah he said and they believe in everything that the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم came with every order of Allah and prohibition of Allah an order from the Prophet and prohibition from the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم is a matter of aqeedah believing that a person must submit to it, even if a person's shahawat, if his desires, or his heedlessness, or whatever, interferes between him and implementing what he knows, he believes that it is incumbent upon him to obey Allah and His Messenger wasallam. It is a matter of belief. Every order of Allah and prohibition of Allah and order of the Prophet and Prohibition of the Prophet wasallam, believing in it is a, fair, is a matter of belief. Affirming it that it is the truth is a matter of belief. And so a person is at jeopardy. A person is at jeopardy when they start to take from the fundamentals of the people of innovation who try to explain away the, not just the text of the book and the sunnah, but the fundamentals. Because you have qawa'id and usul. The text are demonstrating things. And when you have an abundance of text that are going back to the details of particular affairs, those particular affairs are the principles of our religion and the fundamentals of our religion that the scholars put in the books of aqeedah. Of the aqeedah and the manhaj of ahl sunnah The aqeedah, what they believe, and the manhaj of Ahl Sunnah and the methodology of acting upon what they believe and implementing what they believe. Acting upon what they believe and implementing what they believe. There's a statement from those Qutbiyya Sururiya who call us Salafiya Jadida, the new Salafis, Neo Salafis. They say that our, huh? They say a person can be Salafi in Aqeedah, but Ikhwani in Manhaj. They say, Aqeedatuna Salafi is the statement of Salah al Sawi, the teacher of Yasir Qadi. Salah al Sawi, the most dangerous innovators on the face of the earth today. Warned against by the likes of a Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al Abbad, and a Shaykh Abdul Razak al Abbad, and a Shaykh Rabi'ah. And a Shaykh Salih al Fawzan wrote a lengthy article just refuting the title of his book, Al Thawabit Wad Mutaqayyarat, the things that stay the same and the things that can change. He said, Aqeedatuna Salafiya wa Muwajahatuna Asriya. Our Aqeedah, our creed is Salafiya, but our approach to dealing with the situation of the Muslims today, meaning our methodology of Islah, of correcting the societies. And the problems of the societies is a modern day approach. 
it is a modern day approach. Our aqidah came from the Salaf, they said. But their manhaj came from Sayyid Qutb. Al-Mawdudi, Abdurrahman Abdul Khaniq, Adnan Uur, Hallu Majarra, Ali Al-Halabi, Abu Hassan Al-Ma'ribi. Doing what? Not just trying to explain away Nusus text, trying to explain away Usul and Qawaid of the Sunnah, fundamentals of the Sunnah. If you take away the foundation, the whole structure will collapse. That is why the people of innovation are so dangerous. Because the foundation of Iman is qawlul qalb. That the statement of your heart, the belief of your heart is in conformity to what Allah said and the Prophet wasallam said. And these people, they say that they keep the alfaz, that we can keep the wordings. And we can keep some mustalahat, and we can keep some terms, and some slogans, and so on and so forth. But we want to give a modern day explanation, and a modern day approach to how to deal with the problems of the 21st century. So these people... In explaining away the text of the book of the Sunnah and the principles of the book in the Sunnah, and they are attacking the foundation of the faith of the people. The foundation of the faith of the people, that which is from the Mustalzamat, that which is from the Lawazim of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Is that serious? It is that serious. Because the Asl of Iman is what? The statement of the heart and the action of the heart. The statement of the heart requires the action of the heart, which according to the belief in the heart and the action of the heart will be the statements of the tongue and the actions of the limbs. How in the world can a person be Salafi and Aqeedah and it doesn't reflect in their da'wah and it doesn't reflect in their approach? And it doesn't reflect in their tarbiyah. And it doesn't reflect in their own lives. And it doesn't reflect in the way that they raise their children. Except that they haven't understood Salaf. Much to learn. This is a reality. This affair of the statement of the heart. The statement of the heart. Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah believe in the text. al fadhuha wa ma'aniha. The wordings of the text and the meanings of the text. And Al-Ma'ani are of two types. Al-Ma'ani, the meanings of the text are of two types. The first type, the lesser type, are any the Ma'ani al juziyah any the Ma'ani of the individual text. And the higher type are Al-Ma'ani al kulliya which are called Al-Maqasir al-Shari'ah, the goals of the religion, the objectives of the religion, the ma'ani and the hikam, alati shara' Allahu min ajliha tashri'at, li masalihi al-ibad, li tahqiq ubudiyat Allah wa li masalihi al-ibad fil ma'ashi wal ma'ad, the maqasir of the sharia. The meanings and the wisdoms for which Allah legislated our beliefs, our worship, the ahkam, and the everything in the religion. They are the meanings and the wisdoms. They are called al-maqasid al-shari'ah. Al-Imam al-Shatibi rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned this as the first greatest cause of deviation. The first greatest cause of deviation of innovating in the religion of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is al jahl is ignorance wal jahlu jahlan and there are two types of ignorance al jahlu bi al wasail wal jahl bil maqasid ignorance of al wasail yani adat al fahm ignorance of the tools of understanding the tools of understanding such as the arabic language such as the arabic language 
And much of his discussion is about the Arabic language and the uslub of the Arab in their speech. The methodology or the mannerisms rather of the Arab in their speech. And this goes back to the Bab in Usul al Fiqh that is called Dalalatul Al Fadal al Ma'ani. And he, how words indicate their meanings. And he, what is indicated by words of meanings. That goes back to what is? It goes back to what is mantuq and what is mafhum. And what is explicit and implicit in the text. What is explicit in the text, and he, meaning that which almost, which, which many people can realize. Many people can realize. And that which is implicit in the text, Abu al-Mudhaffar al-Sama'ani, rahimullah ta'ala, he said, هَذِهِ خَصِّيَةُ istinbat. This is the job of the mujtahid. This is what makes the scholars different than us. On one occasion, a Shaykh Abdullah al Qudayan, rahimullah ta'ala, he gave a lecture to a masjid full of Bedouins. <laughs> he said, most of the people in the masjid were, I mean, like Bedouin type people. It was a masjid on the outskirts of Riyadh, of Al Riyadh. And they said, most of the people were awam, and a lot of them were almost like Bedouin type people. And he talked in detail about Usul al Fiqh, and then how the scholars derive, I mean, the method of the scholars in taking the mannerisms of the Arab in their speech in the time of the Prophet Wasallam and the science of Usul al-Fiqh that has been passed on today that in reality is the science of understanding flat out just understanding the text what are evidences in the religion and what are not and how to understand the evidences it is the tool of the Mufassir it is that which a person needs to understand the books of Aqeedah if he wants to read the books of the Ulama and understand what they are saying is that which he needs in order to understand the speech of the Ulama he said to Shaykh Abdullah Qudayan, he told his students that he gave that lecture to them so they would appreciate the heaviness of knowledge. The heaviness of knowledge. The greatest cause of deviation, al-jahl. Ignorance of what? First, al-wasail. First, the tools of understanding. That's why al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, al-Hasan al-Basri, he saw some people who had one astray, he said, ahlakatum al-ujma. The inability to understand the Arabic language led them astray. And it was reported by some of the Imams of the Salaf, as was mentioned by Ibn Abdul Bar, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and Jami al Bayan al Ilmu Fadli. Ibn Abdul Bar, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentioned the statement of Al Hassan al Basri, likewise, who said that that which caused the previous nations to deviate before the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sabai al Ummah, and he were the, were the Captives that they took from other peoples that ended up embracing their faith without understanding their language. Without understanding their language. One of the scholars of the Salaf, he was approached by a scholar of Nahu, somebody who had consumed his time with a Nahu, and he was grammar, and so on and so forth. That was from the Mu'tazila. He was from the Mu'tazila. And he claimed that al-wa'du wal waid that the promise of Allah has the same meanings as the threat of Allah. Meaning that Allah cannot break His promise or Allah cannot break His threat. Meaning that if you do something that deserves a punishment of Allah, no hope for you. <laughs> and his shubha was what? That al-wa'd and wa'id were the same thing. And this person was somebody who was consumed with the Arabic language, but he didn't know the difference between al-wa'd and al-wa'id because he didn't take his knowledge from the ulama of the salaf, but rather he took his knowledge from the mu'tazila and the mutakallimin, and he from the people of rhetoric and so on and so forth. He said to him, Inna, he said, Inna min al-ujmati utiits. He said, You have been led astray because of your ujma. Because of your inability to understand the Arabic language has led you astray. The point is reported from Imam Malik rahimullah ta'ala. He said, لا يجلس في مسجدنا من لا يتحدث من لا يتحدث بالعربية. Let no one sit in our masjid who is not speaking Arabic. Let no one sit uh, in al Medina. In the time of Imam Malik, he said, let no one sit in our masjid, meaning having conversations, so on and so forth. Who doesn't speak Arabic? Who doesn't speak Arabic? in that time, 
was widespread in that time, there were those people who didn't have technology, who didn't have any, many of the things that we have, who took a more simplistic approach to learning. When they accepted Islam in those times, they learned the Arabic language. Imam al-Shatibi rahimullah ta'ali said the second type of jahl any of the tools of learning like an nahw and sarf and like usul al-fiqh and other things that are imperative for the student of knowledge and the person who really wants to understand his religion. He said in the second thing he said, and the second thing is being ignorant of al-maqasid. Being ignorant of the maqasid, which are the usul of the religion. The fundamentals of the religion, those things that Allah established a religion for to safeguard what is of a benefit for mankind in this world and the hereafter. And the principles that the Salaf were upon in establishing their communities and so on and so forth. And in the da'wah to Allah wa ta'ala and rectification. And so... The affair of Iman is a statement of the heart and the action of the heart. It is a statement of the heart and it is the action of the heart. It was stated by Al Imam Ibn Manda, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who they said was the most traveled scholar in history. He was the most traveled scholar in history, meaning he traveled and took knowledge from more scholars than anyone else that was known in history. Al-Imam Al-Hafid Ibn Umanda Rahimullah Ta'ala Ibn Umanda Rahimullah Ta'ala He is the one who said that I traveled to the east of the earth and its west and I took knowledge from this many tens of thousands of scholars and so on and so forth the number that he mentioned he said I didn't write a single hadith from a mudabdab from an unstable person a person who was unstable in their sunnah and their salafiyya or an innovator he took knowledge from all of these scholars. He didn't write a single hadith from an innovator. In Kitab al-Iman, he said, وَقَالَ أَهْلُ الْجَمَعَةِ He said, the people of the jama'ah, they said, Al-Iman هِيَ الطَّاعَاتُ كُلُّهَا بِالْقَلْبِ وَالْلِسَانِ وَالسَّائِرَ الْجَوَارِحِ غَيْرَ أَنَّ لَهُ أَصْلًا وَفَرْعًا Ibn Manda, he said in Kitab al-Iman, Kitab al-Iman, which is one of those tremendous books. He also wrote another book called Kitab al-Tawheed. Kitab al-Tawheed. And he lived in the middle part of the 5th century. In the middle part of the 5th century. Rahimullah Ta'ala. Ibn Manda, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said that Al-Iman is a ta'at kulluha. All acts of worship are part of Iman. All acts of obedience are part of Iman. Whether they are done with the heart or the tongue or the limbs. He said, except that there is a asl for iman, there is a what? A foundation for iman. The foundation of iman and a far'ah. And there are branches for iman. The foundation is that which if it is gone, a person's iman is gone. If it is gone, a person's iman is gone. He is no longer a Muslim. إِلَّا أَنْ يَتُوبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ Unless he repents to Allah and comes back to Islam. It is that which causes a person to disbelieve. And it is the action of the heart, or it is the statement of the heart and the action of the heart that was mentioned by Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimullah Ta'ala, which includes Al-Ma'rifa wa Tasdiq as the Al-Ma'rifa, yani understanding, knowledge, and affirming that, which is the statement of the heart, and Al-Mahabba and Al-Ta'adheem, and love of Allah and recognition of His greatness, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, is the action of the heart. It is the action of the heart. Ibn Manda rahimullah ta'ala, he said, فَأَصْلُهُ الْمَعْرِفَةُ بِاللَّهِ وَالتَّسْدِيقُ لَهُ وَبِهِ وَبِمَا جَاءَ مِنْ عِنْدِهِ The foundation of Iman is الْمَعْرِفَةُ بِاللَّهِ وَالتَّسْدِيقُ لَهُ وَبِهِ He said, it is that a person knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he knows and that he knows about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his right to be worshipped subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his believing that to be the truth, lahu wa bihi. He believes in Allah and that belief and his believing is done for the sake of Allah. That's why Allah ta'ala in mentioning the Islam of the prophets and the messengers. 
and the Islam of the creation. He mentioned that the Islam was lillah, was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it wasn't for anyone. Besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it wasn't for the people. It wasn't for any other reason. It wasn't so they could marry somebody. It wasn't for any other reason. So that they could have a sense of belonging, so that they could fit in, so that they could, whatever reason there are, there are incorrect reasons that people accept Islam. The Islam is for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So they know about Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, meaning and they know and that which is necessary for them to enter into the fold of Islam, who was Allah and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they believe in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah, wa bi ma ja'a min andihi. And they believe in everything that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bil qalbi wa lisan. They believe in it with their hearts and their tongues. They believe in it in their hearts and their tongues. So they believe in their heart and they profess their faith with their tongue, meaning with the shahada. Ma'al khudu'i lah, wal hubbi lah, wal khawfi minh, wal ta'zimi lah. Ma'a tark takabburi wal istinkafi wal mu'anada. They believe in it while having humility for it, submitting for it, loving it, being afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having a ta'zim and recognizing the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the greatness of what came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَعَ تَرْكِ تَكَبُّرِ وَالْاسْتِنْكَافِ وَالْمُعَانَدَةِ while at the same time, all of this is the asal of Iman. All of this is from the foundation of Iman. While abandoning a takabbur, and he being arrogant and rejecting what came from Allah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, it's in kafi wal mu'anada, and he are being obstinate, or being obstinate or having objections to what came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَإِذَا أَتَ بِهَادَ الْأَصْلِ فَقَدْ دَخَلَ فِي الْإِيمَانِ Once a person produces this foundation, once he has all of these things, once he has all of these things, then he enters into Iman. وَلَزِمَهُ اسْمُ And the title of being a mu'min in general, and he, he is a believer, he is from the believers, applies to him. And the ahkam of the believers, and how the believers are treated, and so on and so forth. He is dealt with as a believer. وَلَا يَكُونُ مُسْتَكْمِنَ لَهُ حَتَّى يَأْتِي بِفَرْعِهِ And he will not complete his iman until he produces a furur. Until he produces the branches that come as a result of that. And the other acts of obedience of the limbs and the statements of the tongue and obeying Allah and abstaining from disobedience to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala وَفَرْعُهُ الْمُفْتَرَضْ عَلَيْهِ أَوَ الْفَرَائِذُ وَاجْتِنَابِ الْمَحَارِمِ He said, and the branches of it is that which is mandatory upon him, that he does it. And staying away from that which is forbidden. And Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, he said, فَأَهَلُ السُنَّةِ مُجْمِعُونَ عَلَى زَوَالَ الْإِيمَانِ وَأَنَّهُ لَيَنْفَعُ التَّصْدِيقُ مَعَ انْتِفَاءِ عَمَلَ الْقَلْبِ وَهُوَ مَحَبَّتُهُ وَانْقِيَادُهُ and Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah are unanimous upon the fact that Iman departs from a person and that what he believes will, does not benefit him if the action of the heart is not present. Meaning his love of that thing and his ta'adheem of that thing. His love of that thing and his ta'adheem and his recognition of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the status of the Prophet ﷺ and his respecting what came to the Prophet ﷺ from the Kitab and the Sunnah. This is the asal of Iman. Iman is built upon respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that are mu'addimun li hurumati, make us of those who respect me that which he has made inviolable wa ta'ala and, and to forgive us for our shortcomings and to make us of those who understand that the affair of Iman is built upon knowledge and it is built upon loving that which Allah wa ta'ala has blessed us to be able to learn and holding it in high regard to, and to kun kalimatullahi al so that our intention, 
as communities is that the word of Allah wa ta'ala and what is meant by the word of Allah as the scholars they say is everything that came from Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the kalima of Allah be the uppermost this is the goal and he, that shows the reality of a person's iman and he, what he knows of his religion how much he loves it and loves the people that are upon it Wallahi. and loves the people that are upon it and how much he supports it and supports the people that are upon it to the point that the scholars they say that that which is contrary to knowing it and loving it and supporting it are the usul of nifaq they are the fundamentals of nifaq which is rejecting the prophet or anything that he came with sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or hating the prophet or anything that he came with sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or loving that islam should be in a weak condition in the earth or hating that islam should be uppermost in the earth the entirety of the religion, the entirety of Iman, it goes back to these affairs of knowing our religion, loving our religion, and the people who are the people of the Sunnah. And a ta'zim and al munasara and in of holding it in high regard to try to make it the uppermost and supporting it with everything that is in our capability and our disposal.